Photoshop AI is pretty crazy. It takes Photoshop to a whole new level. And the best part is, is that it's actually super easy to use. Let me show you. By the way, we do have timestamps for this whole video so you can easily skip around. If you subscribe to Adobe's Creative Cloud like I do, you can just come over and press on Photoshop beta and you'll be all set and ready to go. Otherwise, click the link in the description. It'll bring you here where you can get a free trial or sign up for a monthly account. Just know that if you use that link, we may earn a commission, which helps support all of our ad-free videos. If you're not looking to pay for Creative Cloud, then head on over to Adobe's Firefly web app Instead, we have a video on that if you're interested. All right, now we are inside of the brand new Photoshop beta. And before we go and start creating stuff, quickly check out this little toolbar here at the bottom. It's brand new and it's basically the heart of Photoshop. So if we have nothing selected, these are our options. Select subject, remove background, transform options, adjustments. This is going to let us hide the bar, reset its position and even pin it where it's at right now. And finally, open up the properties panel. Pretty straightforward. Now, if we make a selection, which I'll do by hitting select subject, you're going to see it change. This is the fun part. Generative fill. This is where you write a text prompt and let Photoshop AI do its thing. Next, we have some selection options. It's going to really help us refine the automatic selection done by Photoshop. And then we can actually invert our selection. So instead of selecting the truck, we're now selecting everything around it. The rest of the options are pretty straightforward and you'll see us use them later in the video. But now that you know what's going on with this toolbar here, the rest of the video will make a lot more sense. Now let's have some fun. The goal is to extend this image using AI. I want it to look realistic and seamless. So now I'm gonna go over to my toolbar and select rectangular marquee tool or just press M and I'm going to select the center of the image, not the entire thing, but most of it. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to click invert selection. So now that I've done that, this is the crazy part. I'm going to hit generative fill and I'm going to leave the text prompt blank. Now just hit generate. And just like that, it looks so, so seamless. But what's really cool is Photoshop actually gives you three variations every single time. So down here, I can just press this arrow and check out different options. For this, I think number two probably looks the best, but they all honestly look really good. How about we take this truck now and we put it in a completely new environment? Step one, let's press select subject. So we have a good starting point for our truck selection. And as you can see, it's not selecting everything perfectly. So now I can press the selection icon over here. I could choose from all of these different options, but personally, I like select and mask. I also recommend here in the view mode that you select overlay and set it to red with 50% opacity. That way you can really see what is and is not being included in your selection. So real quick, go ahead and clean up your selection. And there we go, I've cleaned up my selection. So now what we're gonna do is press the invert selection button on the toolbar once again. Now everything around it is selected. Go ahead and press generative fill. And I'm going to write Utah salt flats then hit generate. Boom. There we go. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. Again, we have three different variations. All of them look pretty awesome. If I don't like any of them, I can go ahead and hit generate once again. And that one, honestly, chef's kiss. I can even go back and change my prompt completely to something like Grand Canyon. Look at these options. Wow. I like this one a lot. I can even take my lasso tool, which is L on your keyboard, or you can go over here to the toolbar and just draw out a circle. And if I want, I could write bighorn sheep and hit generate. <laughs> and there you go, if you wanted to do that. So that's how you add an object, but what if you want to remove something? So I can just go ahead and select the truck here, kind of go around it with the lasso tool. It doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of come around here and there we go. Okay, now hit generative fill, leave it blank, hit generate, and here you go. <laughs> so we started with the truck, changed the background to this, then removed the truck. So it doesn't really make sense, but the fact that we were able to do that is just insane. So now at this point, we have extended images, added elements, and even removed objects. But what about creating something from scratch, a completely unique composite image? So right here we have a blank canvas and I'm going to select about a third of the screen here. 
hit generative fill and type beach sand with ocean waves and hit generate. We'll go with this option here. Now I'm going to select the middle of the image and type in majestic snow capped mountain range and hit generate. I think we'll go with this option right here. Now I'll select the top of the screen and type sun filled sky sparse clouds. I'll go with this one. This is looking great, but why stop there? I'm going to select right over here and I'm going to type yacht in an ocean. That's probably a little too close for it to be safe, but we're going to go with it. Now I'm going to select uh, this portion over here and I will write dog and its owner overlooking the ocean. This isn't perfect by any means, but the fact that this was nothing but a white screen just a second ago is insane. <laughs> now let's go ahead and cover some tips that you want to keep in mind. So first up, it's okay to leave the prompt blank. I think we've learned that that writing nothing is not a bad thing. It's actually key to remove objects, continue images and so on. And it basically tells Photoshop that we don't want to add anything new, but we want the selection to match the rest of the image. So again, a selection like this right around here, nothing fancy is the perfect way to have this amazing photo of the sky without that bird in the way. Sorry, bird. Number two, be creative with your selection. Here's the best way to explain it. So if I want to add a hat to this guy, I may go ahead and make a selection. That's something like this. And I would just type the word hat. So there we go. Just a normal hat that you would see every single day. But now if I make this selection very similar to start, but super large, we're going to get a different kind of hat. I'll show you. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's an interesting hat. But when I change the prompt to top hat, you're going to see it look a little bit more realistic, still crazy. But because I had this large selection, Photoshop thought it had to do something with all of that space. But when I did my first selection, I made sure it wasn't that large and it looks a lot better. Also, if you didn't know in the properties panel, I can change my prompt. As long as I still have this generative layer, I can actually change it. So here I might just write beanie. And because my selection wasn't that tall, we got a pretty good result. Number three, don't use instructional prompts. If you are familiar with mid journey or other AI image generators, you may think you have to tell AI uh, to create or alter or make or any of those sort of keywords to get the best results. And that's just not the case for Photoshop. Uh, you have to focus on being descriptive with adjectives and nouns and all that fun stuff. I'll give you a really good example. So in this situation, if I select a big section here and say, you know what, make dog bigger, you would think that this dog would be bigger. Instead, <laughs> Photoshop will actually give you a different dog. That is not our dog. That is also not our dog. And even this is not our dog, but it is bigger. And finally, number four, use it to blend photos together. This is super, super cool. So it's not just about changing backgrounds and adding objects or creating composite images from scratch. You don't want to overcomplicate the possibilities. And what I mean by that is we can easily take two images like this and make something super, super awesome. You want to see how awesome that's how awesome. So all I did was have two separate images here and I selected what I wanted to stay and what I wanted to go. So I kind of went around here. I said, let's do this. Let's do that. Come around back over the top. And we have this weird L shape. And again, don't have to do anything other than hit the word generate. Even though the photo on the left may be in a completely different state or country from the photo on the right, somehow with a little bit of magic, it seems like one realistic photo and honestly, if you were to show someone, I don't think they would know unless they really got down dirty and studied every little pixel. With all those tips in mind, you will be an expert with the generative fill tool in no time at all. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like and also subscribe for more videos like this. We've covered a whole slew of AI tools and topics, so be sure to check those out. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.